Hey there, folks. Just a quick demonstration on how to export your HRV data and open it up in Kubios from HeartFi. The first important thing is to check your ECG data. Take a look at the beats per minute. Make sure that that seems accurate. If it doesn't, you may have issues in your development board sketch or your beat detection line you may not be crossing all of the uh, R waves. But that's what you want to pick up. You want this beat detection line to be set at a level um, low enough that all the R waves are crossing it high enough such that the, the following waves uh, uh, are not. That's very important to make sure that your our, our intervals are clean. You want to make sure that your HRV data length is highest as it can be, which is 5,000. So make sure you set that right at the beginning after you make sure your beat detection line is catching those R waves. It's nice in the hard guide, you can see if you missed one, such as this one here, you missed that. But you can correct for that in Kubios. So I've been recording actually for a while now. So I'm just going to go ahead and export HRV data, save it to downloads or wherever you, and I'm just going to replace the file. That I, and then I'm going to go ahead and load it into Kubios, open new file, select that file. Make sure your data units are milliseconds. You just do column one. Data type RR. And that's okay. If you want to fill in subject name, age, gender, the data you have on the individual, you certainly can. You can go ahead and import. And there it is. You have, I have over 20 minutes of data here. As you can see, I definitely have some, some beats that need to be corrected. So you can go into beat correction here. And just start with very low for your threshold. Boom, like it's going to take a lot of those out. Now we still have this one. So maybe we'll try to go up to the next one. Still. And, and, and even at low, it's only corrected five beats total. So 0.3% of the whole data set. Let's go to medium. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Only 0.36%, six beats total out of all of the recorded beats and it's looking better now these have been corrected for so you can pick a five minute window if you want to do the report um at, in the home it's going to be a reflection of everything uh this will be reflect the whole data so as you move the window around these will kind of adjust accordingly. Um, now, this data set is a little erratic as I was walking through most of it. To get accurate resting physiology, you want to treat it about the same as you're measuring blood pressure. You want someone to be at rest at least five minutes before you start looking at the data. You just obviously start recording. Um, before then, if you want to start measuring, once the person is settled, not talking. If you're going to measure breath work, um, that, that's no longer something like HRV biofeedback. It's no longer reflective of 
individual's physiology at all. Um, but you could use it to determine whether or not the resonant frequency rate, the best rate for the individual has been achieved. And there's plenty of data on that, plenty of video on that. Um, you can check the frequency domain, the peaks, and nonlinear, which is fractal measurements such as uh, detrended fluctuation analysis alpha one which has recently become really popular in evaluating aerobic anaerobic stages in athletic training for our purposes if we're trying to measure golden ratio someone's heart rate seeing if at rest it follows phi we could experimentally see if uh, there's anything significant in terms of a hrv measurement that would reflect that in other words if we can observe someone following and again if you're using phi mode you can tailor it to the individual by adjusting the frequency component up and down and also the amplitude the frequency component would match to their breath rate the amplitude would you would want to match to their specific variability but again you wouldn't necessarily want to prompt the individual to try to follow it um, and then consider that a measurement of resting physiology that would be a sort of another type of biofeedback measurement in other words theoretically experimentally this would be a new area of research. We could see if an individual has phi in their breath rate and also the amplitude. If there's anything that consistently reflects that in Kubios. And perhaps some of the fractal measurements may consistently indicate that that could be something that one could look for it would also be interesting to see how is that reflected in frequency domain time domain is a little dicier um because these are specifically meant to reflect specific changes over specific time windows low frequency um does not get reflected in things like rmssd so something like sdnn you want a big window for and you want to look up and research and make sure you're using appropriate windows to measure like unprompted physiological changes um, at the accurate time window. There may be a little more playroom for analyzing any potential indicators of golden ratio in nonlinear frequency domain. Um, but again, that would be dependent on what you're what kind of theories you're you're trying to uh, see are reflected or not? You can also you can do a report of the window, and you can kind of make that window large. Pick the hand and kind of look. You get everything 
from a specific window. So you might find a window over a long recording where maybe you're starting to see some golden ratio. You may potentially see the corrected red line reflect what um, you know what you're seeing in the heart guide. And, and again, this is experimental. Um, does this look a certain way in frequency domain or nonlinear? You can also compare different windows. Um, potentially, I could duplicate a couple windows and see sample two. Did anything change there? Did any of my fractal me measurements change? Do I see any golden ratio here in the red line, in the corrected beat line? that may potentially show fractal measurement changes. Is there a reflection there or not? Now, determining whether or not that's good or bad, again, is also theoretical. And um, would also be dependent on whether the windows you're measuring are controlled breath work or... Uh, sort of a resting physiological state, maybe a meditative state, but not, again, someone purposefully trying to control their breath work, which would distort what you would see naturally in respiratory sinus arrhythmia and things like that. So that's it. Um, you can always export the report. If you have multiple windows, you'll get those generated, and you can print them, save them as PDFs, um, and use that as sort of a basis for experimental theories and research.